What's up dudes and dudettes, it's Jimmy aka Zero Tolerance 55 here, and today I'm continuing the uh, storyline of the Bioshock franchise. This is part 4, so if you haven't seen the first 3 parts, go ahead and check them out here, here, and here. But uh, I'm just going to assume you guys have watched those or kind of know the storyline, so I'm just going to jump right into the story of Bioshock 1. The game Bioshock opens with a man named Jack sitting aboard a commercial flight over the Atlantic Ocean in the year 1960. He's enjoying a drink with a present sitting in his lap when the plane mysteriously crashes. He awakes underwater surrounded by sinking wreckage and luggage and he slowly makes his way to the surface. Surrounded by the burning wreck of the aircraft, Jack swims to the only structure in sight, a lighthouse mysteriously standing in the middle of the ocean. Once he's inside, he finds a bathosphere, which he cautiously enters. The submersible begins a rapid descent as a video plays explaining the purpose of of the building of Rapture, which Jack realizes is where the bathysphere is taking him. As the bathysphere approaches the docking bay, Jack overhears a man order another man named Johnny to meet the arrival of the bathysphere. After the sub docks, Jack witnesses Johnny being murdered by an insane woman who he later finds out to be a splicer, someone who modified their genetic structure. The man who ordered Johnny to meet him introduces himself as Atlas over the radio within the bathysphere. A polite Irishman who always bends, begins his request with, Would you kindly? Atlas reveals to Jack things in Rapture are messed up and that he plans on helping Jack to stay alive. Atlas reveals to Jack that the Splicers are under the control of Andrew Ryan and that they have cut off Atlas from his family and personal submarine which are located in Neptune's bounty. Atlas informs Jack that he plans on using him to get to his family so they can all escape together. Under the guidance of Atlas, Jack makes his way through Rapture, eventually finding a gatherer's garden vending machine. He injects himself with one of the plasmids present and immediately begins to feel pain as his genetic code is rewritten. Not paying attention, Jack falls from a ledge and is knocked unconscious. After awakening, Jack continues on, learning about Raptures, the Splicers, Adam, plasmids, etc. until he's discovered by Andrew Ryan, who communicates to him through a television set. Ryan believes that Jack is a CIA or KGB agent set down to Rapture to spy on him, and seals the way to Neptune's bounty, which forces Jack to use an alternate path through the medical pavilion. As Jack makes his way through the medical pavilion, he begins to hallucinate, a side effect of gene splicing, but he also picks up audio logs which help him piece together the puzzle of what happened to the city. Through these recordings, he learns of Dr. Yi Su Chong and Dr. Steinman, Atlas informs Jack that Steinman was a plastic surgeon in Rapture, but went insane after over-splicing with different plasmids and becoming addicted to Adam. He reveals that Steinman is dangerous, but that he also has the key Jack needs to access the bathysphere to Neptune's bounty. Jack realizes he must kill Steinman because the madman will not give up the key, so he does. With Steinman dead and key in hand, Jack makes his way to the bathysphere. On his way, however, he encounters a mob of splicers attacking a big daddy and little sister. The big daddy is taken down, but not before killing all the splicers save one. The remaining splicer attempts to kill the little sister present when he is shot dead by Bridget Tenenbaum, who arrives on scene at that exact moment. Tenenbaum reveals to Jack that the little sisters carry Adam within them, and that they can be saved. She gives him a plasma that allows him to extract the Adam slug from the girls without killing them, returning them to normal. At this point within the game, the player is introduced to the choice of saving or killing all the little girls he comes across. If the player saves them, he receives less Adam, which makes the game harder to play, but rewards him with positive morality and a positive ending. For the sake of these videos, we're going by the canon story, which details Jack saving the little sisters. Jack goes on to save the girl and boards the bathysphere for Neptune's bounty. When Jack arrives in Neptune's bounty, Atlas informs him that he needs to make his way to Fontaine's, Fontaine's Fisheries, where he meets a man named Peach Wilkins. Wilkins refuses to let Jack into the fisheries because he is paranoid and believes that Fontaine was still alive and that Jack's was one of, Jack was one of his agents who was sent to kill him. He tests Jack's loyalty by asking him to take pictures of splicers using a specific research camera. Jack explores Neptune's bounty and takes the required pictures, and along the way, he learns a lot of Rapture's past, including Frank Fontaine's rise to power as a smuggling kingpin, the discovery of Adam, how Ryan tried to stop Fontaine, and, Font and Fontaine's eventual death. He also finds out that the reason Wilkins is so paranoid is because he was one of Fontaine's men who turned on him and was responsible for his downfall. 
After taking the required photos, Jack returns to Wilkins, who lets him in on one condition, that Jack surrenders his weapons. Jack does so, and Wilkins and his personal army of splicers attack, not realizing that Jack also has the control of plasmids. Using the plasmids he had acquired along his way, Jack was able to defeat Wilkins and retrieve his weapons. After killing Wilkins, Atlas reminds Jack that he's very close to Smuggler's Hideout, where the submarine and Atlas's family was waiting. While making his way there, Ryan contacts him over the radio, informing him not to help Atlas or that he would truly know what it was like to be his enemy. Jack arrives in a control room that overlooks the dock and submarine. He activates the controls and allows Atlas to enter the dock. Jack was at a helpless distance when Splicers ordered by Ryan attacked and forced Atlas to retreat away from the sub. Andrew Ryan tells Jack that Atlas and his family will die and then detonates explosives planted on the sub, killing Atlas's family. Infuriated, infuriated Atlas flees and yells at Jack to do the same and escape to Arcadia. Jack makes his way through a secret passage into Arcadia, the Arboretum of Rapture and the part of the city responsible for generating the oxygen. Atlas informs Jack that he will see anti-Atlas propaganda around the city and that this was the doing of Ryan back when they were political adversaries. He continues on to tell Jack that he doesn't care about that anymore and just wants to make it to the surface alive. As Jack is preparing to leave Arcadia, Ryan releases a chemical into the air that kills vegetation, which causes part of Arcadia to go into lockdown and to stop spreading of the chemical and conserve oxygen. <clears throat> Jack makes his way to Arcadia's research lab where he's introduced to Professor Julia Langford over an intercom in her office. Langford is the scientist responsible for keeping the plants alive and oxygen flowing within Rapture. She starts telling Jack how to reverse the damage that is being done, but Ryan interrupts and releases a poison gas into her office, which kills her. Jack finds her last two audio recordings, which detail the, how to create the Lazarus Vector, which will reverse the process. Jack makes his way through Arcadia and the neighboring farmer's market, collecting all the components needed. Once finished, he releases it into the air, restoring the oxygen levels and removing the lockdown that had him stuck in Arcadia. He entered the bathosphere and made his way to the next part of the city, Fort Frolic. When Jack enters Rapture's entertainment complex, he begins to make his way to the next bathosphere, which will continue his journey when access is denied. Atlas contacts him, but his voice transmission begins to fade away and is suddenly replaced with the voice of Sandra Cohen. Cohen was, in his own words, Rapture's be most beloved artist, and when the city began to fall apart, he took control of Fort Frolic for himself. He tells Jack that he cut off all transmissions from Atlas and Ryan, and that Jack would have to prove himself before moving on. Cohen sends a group of Splicers to attack him, and when Jack defeats them, he invites him to join him in Fort Frolic's atrium. When Jack enters, he sees a man chained to a piano being forced to play it. When the man screws up, Cohen scolds him and triggers explosives around the piano, killing the man. Cohen then invites Jack to help him finish his masterpiece, which involves Jack tracking down and killing four of Cohen's students who rebelled against him. Throughout the way, Cohen's mood swings flip back and forth, and Jack sees how truly demented the man is. However, when Jack returns with the pictures, Cohen arrives in person to appreciate the masterpiece. He congratulates Jack and tells him the way to Andrew Ryan is clear. Jack leaves Fort Frolic with Atlas telling him over the radio that it's time to finally deal with Ryan. Alright, I'm approaching the 9 minute mark. I hate to split Bioshock 1 into two videos, but it looks like that's what I'm going to do. So, part 2 will be up very soon. And, uh, stay tuned for that, please. As always, thank you guys for watching my video. I appreciate every view, like, and subscriber I get. So if you enjoyed it, go ahead and click the like button and subscribe to me, because I have a lot more videos coming out. If you want to leave some feedback of what you thought, or even just give me ideas for new videos, you can leave them in the comment section below because I'm constantly checking it, constantly, you know, seeing what people are saying. And I also do the same thing on Twitter. You can find me at ZeroTolerance55. It's a great way to keep up to date on what I'm working on and also to contact me and say, hey, you know, I think you should do this video or whatever. I also use Instagram for the same purpose, mainly to post like production photos of what I'm working on as little sneak peeks of what's coming up. So you can follow me on there as ZeroTolerance55 as well. As you can tell, I have a bunch of friends who also make videos. Go ahead and give all their channels a check out if you get the chance, because they all do everything from gameplays to music videos. So give them a chance if you uh, have some free time. Thank you guys for watching my video, and I will catch you later.